Okay, guys, welcome back. In this video, I'll show you how you can monitor user transactions in real time and get alerted whenever your users do any kind of token transaction, native transaction, internal transaction, NFT transaction, mint, burn, whatever, any kind of smart contract event interaction, and so on and so forth. Now, there are many use cases for this. For example, if you build a wallet, you want to send alerts when your users do transactions, or let's say you build a social app like Bibble is doing, where they have millions of users and they have um, a token gating so that you can access some chats if you have some uh, assets and you can access other chats if you have uh, some other assets. So they need to know in real time whenever users uh, send or receive assets or do anything on chain. Now, there are two ways, two ways to do this. The first way I'll show you is how to do it with Ethers.js, basically connect to an RPC node directly and set this up. You will require probably a few devs to do this if you want to do it on a big scale. And then I'll show you how to do it using Morali streams where this is more out of a, out of the box solution where you just click exactly what you want, which events, you can supply custom events, you select which chains you want, you can add and remove chains. We're adding chains all the time. You can add, remove addresses, which addresses you're monitoring, or you can monitor all addresses. So all of that and more will be in this episode. So smash up the like and let's get started. First and foremost, Let's start with how you would do this using something like Ethers.js. So you want to get notified as soon as a user changes balance, uh, whether it is native balance like Ether uh, or ERC20 balance like uh, USDT, USDC, any other ERC20 token or NFT. How would you do it? How would you do it? Well, there are two steps. Uh, and th th these are separate steps. The first thing you need to figure out is how to listen to ERC20s and NFTs because these are smart contracts. And next, you have to figure out how to listen for native and internal transactions because th this is another system, basically. When, you're, uh, when you learn about blockchain more and more and more, you realize like different assets, they work differently. Tokens and NFT is one type of beast that you have to handle and then the native and internal is a separate type of beast and they work differently and you need different things for different um, uh, assets. That's why putting this all together is quite a challenge, just contacting the node directly. But this is how you would do it. So let's say that you have a RPC node, you can use ethers in order to uh, set up your provider using the RPC node like this. And then you can specify which addresses you want to listen to, like so. And you specify uh, which event. So in this case, we're listening to the transfer event and um, we're monitoring this user addresses, all right? And then you can get uh, data uh, here in this uh, callback. So, uh, so far so good, easy to start. And so what, what kind of data do you get? You get undecoded raw data uh, from the node. So you get block hash, transaction transaction hash, uh, some uh, block number, and uh, that's it basically. Very, very, very uh, raw data. And you need to call all kinds of APIs in order to get more data. For example, in order to get the current balance of the user, you need to call another API. In order to get the token logo, you need another API. In order to get the, uh, token, um, uh, the token decimals and so forth, you need another API. So this is raw data, and basically in your in your app, you cannot do anything with it. It's useless. It's, it's uh, something that you can use in order to query even more data. And of course, there are some uh, some uh, uh, pros with this. I mean, the pro is that you can plug in any RPC and uh, this will uh, this will work and you can uh, reuse it. But the con is that you you build a monster; it becomes very very big very quickly. So this is how you listen for uh, for ERC twenty. So you listen to a transfer event. Then uh, you need to listen for NFTs. There are many different uh, types of NFT. Uh, contracts. It is there is, for example, uh, 1155, 721. There are all kinds of edge cases. So you basically have to, on a very low level, you have to work on a very low level, and you have to manage all of this and uh, remove and add new uh, new new addresses. You have to figure out if there is a new type of NFT uh, contract, NFT standard that is live, and you need to update the events. And you basically have to monitor all of this and ensure that it runs. And so this is for NFTs and um, and uh, tokens, but for native transactions, for example, when users transfer ETH, not token, but ETH, it's uh, totally different. Uh, so uh, you need a different system. Here you need to listen to every block, and then you have to go through all transactions, and then you have to see if the transactions uh, match uh, the address that you have, if your address is participating in those transactions. And you have to do this for all wallets and all chains. So you can imagine the number of loops. Uh, let's say there is a new chain that is coming online. You have to figure out where to get the RPC node. Some nodes support uh, internal transactions. You have to use the trace method. Some of them don't support 
supported. So basically, I mean, to do this on a big scale, like for example, like Bibble is doing, where you have a million addresses, where you have a massive, massive production app, to do this properly, like you're looking at the whole team to do it, to do it properly. And again, because the problem is that it is unstable, Especially with new chains where you have a, a node not being stable, where node is overloading, you have to figure out how to load balance and so on and so forth. Uh, and if you miss events, what do you do? The event is gone. It's real time. The event is gone if you miss it. Uh, and then whenever you want to add a new user, you have to figure out the method for that. Like how do you insert a new user into this whole system? Like how do you add a new user into all the callbacks, into all the like uh, all of this, so uh, all of these configurations? So that's on you. Uh, then you have to filter from two, so uh, go through all the transactions in a block, and you have to do this for all chains. So when there is a new chain, you have to add the you have to add the new RPC, figure all of this out, and uh, also you will not be getting airdrops, mints, and burns because they are not uh, normal transfers. So you have to figure out how to custom code different things, such as mint, burned, airdrop, and also all kinds of other things that uh, come in the future. Because it, as you know, this industry develops quickly. There are new events, you have to be up to date with all of that. So as you can see, it's quite complex. And that's why many of our clients, including, for example, Bebel, uh, are using Morales streams, where a lot of this is just removed from your from your plate. You don't have to do anything. You just click a few buttons here, uh, exactly what you want. You can even exclude possible spam events because if you build on this uh, cheap uh, cheap chains, like for example, you build on Gnosis or you build on like this uh, cheap fee chains, you will see that you will be bombarded with spam. You listen to all of the NFT uh, events, let's say. Well, suddenly there comes a user, they deploy a million NFTs, it happens. And then your backend has, has to handle all of that. They uh, has to in, um, digest all of that. Uh, if your backend is dead for some reason, it cannot handle it. You need, the, you need to figure out a way to recover. You need a guy or a girl, <laughs> some kind of employee that uh, runs all of this. So it becomes quite intense. Here, you can just exclude possible spam events and we will be doing that for you. And of course, you can click exactly on which uh, which events you want, uh, whether it is token approvals, transfers, means, burns, um, uh, NFT, uh, NF NFT events. You can uh, do a, co a custom event by just entering the ABI. And um, uh, then you can also add and remove addresses on the fly, okay? So once this um, stream is live, I will soon show you how you get it uh, up and running, but once it's live, you can add or remove addresses uh, while it's running. You can add or remove chains once it's, uh, while it's running. So you don't have to stop anything, nothing stops. And most importantly, if something goes wrong, let's say that your server is down, there is, we have this uh, logs here with all the errors, so you can, come back and you can replay failed deliveries. So this is what I meant when I said that, what happens if uh, your infrastructure is down? Let's say you miss some events. Well, with Morales, we're gonna tell you exactly what you missed, you can replay, and you will be getting all of the, all of the data. But not only that, Morales is also full with uh, metadata. So for example, when you receive a webhook, you get the token name, symbol, uh, we're launching logo this week. So if you watch it like one week from the video, uh, from when the video is published, we have also logo. Within a few weeks, we're launching that when a user transfers a token, we also send you how many tokens they currently have. So you get the transfer event and the balance after the transfer event, which is massive because at the end of the day, Let's say that you use uh, the node to get updates in real time, and then you fetch balance using an API, like a third-party API. You never know if the API is synced to the same block as the node. So if you use ethers for this real-time monitoring and then you rely on the third-party API, you have another variable. Is the API and the node on the same page? Because let's say that you know that the user transferred tokens because they just did the you just received the webhook and then yeah you need to call all kinds of things you have a problem if the api and node is not synced but we will be adding all kinds of things here in the coming weeks such as for example the current balance and so so much more so definitely stay tuned here and also you know uh, you, you see here possible spam uh, if it is possible spam then uh, you can remove it uh, by uh, clicking that button um, so all in all, Morales Streams, it's five minutes to set up. You can do it on your own. You don't need a dev who runs and manages all of this. It covers native transactions, ERC20, NFTs, means, burns, internal transactions, any custom event, and so on and so forth. You can add millions of addresses on the fly, and you have 100% reliability. What do you mean by that? 
Anything that is not delivered is saved, so you can replay. You can replay any kind of um, event by going here to stream errors and, and uh, replaying. So nothing is ever lost. And that's also how, for example, Bebal is using Morales. And also, we have um, uh, enterprise-grade security with SOC 2 Type 2 certification, meaning that we do have disaster recovery, meaning that we do have all of the procedures in place to ensure that uh, this system is bulletproof and that uh, you can trust it and that uh, you don't have to worry. You know that everything will, will be okay. So uh, let me now show you how uh, how to set it up and uh, let, let me demo it uh, using an address and then uh, we will see how we can get uh, uh, a test uh, a test webhook here in the in the console so let's say i want to monitor this address this is the address of donald trump by the way so you copy it like so and then you go to the uh, streams here on, in the left um, corner and um, you create a new stream. Let me start here from the beginning. You will see something like this. You can create a stream from the UI or you can create a stream via the SDK. And uh, it depends on if you just want to get into the code and have uh, full control of the code and uh, and just uh, type, you can do click here or you can click here um, if you want to do it in the UI. I mean, normally many, uh, many users, uh, what they do is that they create stream in the UI and then they just update it and add addresses and so on and so forth from the code, but we can speak more about that later on. So let's say I want to monitor all of the things here. Let's say I want to monitor common events like token approvals, transfers, means, and so on and so forth. If you want to monitor uh, NFTs, you can create a separate stream, but all the token stuff you can monitor in one stream and then all the NFTs you can monitor in the other stream. Uh, next, let's say you want to add the address here. Uh, so you, you just paste it, uh, oops. Uh, let us let me copy here, you paste it like this, bam, add address, and it will show up here. You can add many addresses if you want to monitor, many addresses, uh, fully possible. Chains, let's uh, check Ethereum mainnet, but you can do all chains if you want, we can do it also. Uh, let's do like this, and uh, let's test our stream, and uh, to test the stream, you specify which chain you want to test it on, and then let's, let, let's say that I want to see this uh, uh, this transfer, this ERC20 transfer, I want to see that uh, we get a webhook for it. So we copy the block and then we paste it here and then we click test stream. And as you can see, you're going to get all kinds of uh, raw data also. But what you want to see is if you scroll down, you're going to see here ERC20 transfers. You open it up, you see that uh, there is this MAGA, Trump, uh, token decimals 9 and um, it is basically this transfer right here. So you get all kinds of metadata. And again, if you watch this video in a week, there's also going to be token logo uh, with uh, a URL that you can use in your app. There's going to be his current balance in the in the coin and, and so much more. Uh, and then also you have the um, ERC20 approvals. So if in this block there would be some approvals, you would see it here. NFT token approvals, you would see it here. NFT transfers, you would see it here. Native balances, you would see it here. So everything is super super simple and then uh, the next step is that you can deploy it so you deploy it by entering a webhook url and then uh, it's super simple uh, to to set up so here you need to enter your uh, your backend uh, yeah a webhook url and uh, once you click continue this will be live and uh, and running so this is a short demo uh, and the homework for you is to complete it and enter webhook url but i think we communicate the main thing here if you just look at the uh, at this uh, test uh, test your stream stage you see all of the data uh, and finally uh, like i mentioned you can you can interact with the stream via the sdk you can also create the stream via the sdk it is super simple uh, and it's good uh, if you need some kind of automation maybe you want uh, let's say uh, your user signs up and you want to like automate something then you need the sdk um, uh, to uh, to add things automatically but here's how you would create a stream by the way like so uh, via the sdk update the stream is super simple let's say that you want to uh, you want to listen to some specific event here's how you would do it delete the stream super simple like so uh, add an address so let's say that you want to uh, add like a million addresses you just specify a big uh, fat array with all the addresses you want to add, and then you uh, do streams.add address and you specify the whole the whole array. So you can add and also you can remove address in the same fashion. <clears throat> so adding removing addresses in as an array with like millions of addresses, you can do it. Easy, easy, easy. So guys, that's it. 
uh, go and try it. Uh, this will save you a lot of time, probably months of building, but also many months if you consider the uh, upkeep, the team that needs to run it if you do it via nodes. Uh, obviously, there are pros, uh, some pros to do it via the node because you can, um, you, I mean, anyone can start messing with the node quite quickly, but it's super easy to start with Morales also. It's even easier. So once you get going, it's uh, it's even simpler. So uh, try this out and uh, let, let us know how it works. Uh, our job here is to simplify as much as possible so you can delight your user and uh, not worry about the backend, the infra, because that's the problem most uh, projects Base, that they start building something in Web3, they end up spending 90% of their time building uh, backend, like infra, uh, CICD deployments, and they become a data uh, data team, data engineers, instead of focusing on the user, and then no one uses their, their app, so that's a big problem. Instead, using tools, you can focus on the user, you can get users in your app. Okay, thanks a lot, guys. Smash the like, and goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye.